All right, I think we are good to go. Anybody over here on the wall, if you want to grab a seat, feel free. There's plenty of spots. All right, so just a couple quick ground rules. Um, when I'm done here, David will come up here and talk. Then Travis will come up and talk after that. And Travis will stand up here. And if you have questions, just raise your hand. We will get a mic to you. We've got mics on both sides of the room. Please identify yourself, and we'll go from there. So without that, David, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming to Oxford today and spending some time with us. Uh, one nice thing about this search, for sure, is that hiring a coach from this part of the country, they understand that you get snow in April in Oxford, and you don't have to, uh, to explain all that. Spring in Ohio, right? Um, so I appreciate everybody making it. A couple thank yous, first and foremost. Um, and I'm going to start with one that I usually forget until last, and that's my wife, Katie, uh, and our boys, who are both in school today. Uh, just, you know, the last two weeks have been a bit of a whirlwind for our family, finishing hockey, travel season, getting ready for baseball. They're both playing baseball, so trying to figure out baseball practice and who can get kids to what. And Katie's just been a, a fantastic leader of our household. So again, thank you, Katie, for your patience through all this and your counsel and advice. I appreciate it. Um, Jude Killey has been huge for me again, as he always is. I know I can count on Jude. We were basically a two-person committee in this process, and so Jude spent countless hours on the phone uh, assisting me, and, and I want to give him a thanks as well for everything. President Crawford and the entire President's Cabinet, huge support from our legal counsel, uh, HR, everybody at the University Marketing Office, just a really team effort over in Routabush, and I want to thank all of them for their efforts as well. I do want to take a minute to thank our men's basketball student athletes. You know, they've given it their all. They, they are a great group. Um, all of, we had six kids this year that were all graduating and moving on and did everything we asked them to do here. And I really appreciate their efforts and, and what they've accomplished over the past, you know, four years of their career. And so I want to thank the men's basketball student athletes as well. Athletic staff, I want to thank the athletic communications and marketing staff, many who have put all this together and set this up for us. Um, the Sport and Facility Services Group, which really helped and, and get Travis some gear yesterday, and they stepped up and really helped make things, some things happen, so thank you to them. And then our University Communications and Marketing Office also was very helpful in, in this entire process. When it started, uh, we, we really focused, Jude and I, on thinking about a Division I head coach and searching out somebody that had that qualification and had achieved that level of experience already. That was our number one priority. We put it, if you look at the job description and the preferred qualifications, it said Division I head coaching experience. Just felt that was really important for where this program is right now and where we want it to go. So we really locked in on that group uh, of the people that were applying, talking to agents. I was getting reference calls from people that I've never talked to in my life that somehow got my cell phone. And I returned every single phone call, every single text, every single email. Jude was on the phone constantly. We were talking to all poten potential candidates and, and working towards our list of trying to figure out which direction we were going to go. It goes without saying that Travis stood out quickly in terms of our criteria and what we were looking at for obvious reasons. I needed a little bit more from him. I needed to make sure I spent some time and, and really got to the to the the pieces of why Miami and why now for him. Within the first 15 minutes of our conversation, I felt like the most important question I needed answered, he answered for me. And that was simply, where's your head at right now? This is a weird business. We all live it, coaches get it, all of us in athletics get it, right? Things happen. You hear stories about people needing time, get right back in, whatever you wanna do, how you're gonna be, that's the kind of conversation Travis and I needed to have. So I asked him that question, and I'm gonna quote his answer here. I wanna work, and I'm motivated to get right back in and have success. He, he was unequivocal on that and very direct. I had my answer right there that he was ready to go. There was no more doubt in my mind. You see kids all the time walking around when they're young and they have a shirt on that says, you know, football is life or basketball is life or whatever the case may be when they're young and they're, they love a sport, right? Travis should walk around with a shirt like that with a basketball on it because it is his life, right? He, basketball is life for him. It's in every part of his blood. It flows through his body every day. I know that. Other than his beautiful family, who are all here with us today, I know that, that basketball is what he's about, right? 
Uh, I do want to take a minute to welcome his family. We have Amanda, so welcome to the Miami family. Let's give her a round of applause, please. Nice welcome. Your parents are here as well, Travis, right? We have Barbara and Jerry, so thank you guys for coming and making the trip over. It's good to see you. And I'm gonna give a shout out to Winston and Anderson. My kids always hate it when I call them out at a press conference, and so I'm gonna call them out and he's already talking, so I love it. So it's great to have you guys here and, and in your red gear already, so good to see you. Those fruit snacks were good? Yeah, all right, it's good. <laughs> So other than family, like I said, basketball has really been Travis's life. It always has been, all the way up through his journey to today. That's true of a lot of people in this world. I think anyone that coaches in this profession of Division I athletics, it is their life, right? They've devoted themselves to it nonstop since they were young. What separates Travis, in my opinion, and makes him unique is the depth and quality of the relationships he's formed through all levels of basketball. It really is amazing when you sit and think and you listen to his career and you look at where he's been, the people that he's connected with, it's a it's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome list and a lot of different people reached out on his behalf from all those different levels. He's a tireless worker, a purposeful leader of young men, something that is very valuable and needed right now in our society more than ever. And he really has a mentality of a CEO running a basketball program. And so when we sat back, Jude and I, and really analyzed what we needed, we felt like he hit all those categories for us. There are so many things changing and shifting in our profession right now, particularly in basketball, with Transfer Portal and everything else that's going on in the world. We feel like Travis is the perfect leader to move this program forward at this time and embrace all those changes and be able to you know, adapt and make sure that we're on the forefront of everything that's happening in the profession. So, you know, I felt strongly about Travis from that point forward through the interview process and was thrilled when he told me that he was going to join the Red Hawks and we love to, to have him here to celebrate and I'm going to bring him up and introduce to you guys the newest coach of Miami basketball, Travis Steele. He didn't turn it over, so that's a good thing. You know, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to Director of Athletics David Saylor and President Crawford for giving us this incredible opportunity here at Miami. I also want to say thanks to my family. Obviously, Amanda, Winston, and Anderson are here tonight or today. My, uh, my mom and dad for giving me unwavering support. Um, this business is crazy, a lot of hours, and again, appreciate it. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate all your support. Um, we're ecstatic to have this opportunity, my family and I. You know, I've had a long affinity for Miami. And I used to be a high school basketball coach in Indianapolis. I was an AAU basketball coach as well. Um, and I'd bring over uh, several prospective student athletes to come visit Miami. And always knew what the brand was. And a couple things really stuck out then and still today, they still stick out. And, and first and foremost, the education that you get here at Miami. It's top notch. It's a world class institution. You get a Miami degree, you're set for life. That's first and foremost. Second is the campus. When you think of getting that college experience um, that you want to be able to get, whether you're a student athlete, a student, you think of a place like Oxford. You think of when you walk around on this campus, it just gives you that feel, that good feel that's beautiful. And obviously, it's been, it was beautiful back, in, back then when I used to bring kids over to come and visit. And it's gotten even better since then. There's still construction going on on campus as I've kind of drove around the last two days. Then the third thing is, is the rich tradition of success in the men's basketball program. Um, you look from the team success, individual success, the former coaches, it's as good as it gets. And I got a couple of these little, little notes down here. You know, Miami is the all-time winningest program in the MAC. 26 postseason appearances, 21 MAC titles. You think of all the former players, the great players that have donned Miami across their chest. Wally Zerbiaks, 
the Devin Davises, the Ron Harpers, the Ron Hunters, the Wayne Embrys. I mean, there's been some tremendous players that have come here, represented Miami the right way, both on and off the court. The former coaches, which I'm just honored to be here, obviously in this position. Um, you know, we've had several really good coaches. Coach Schreider was obviously a terrific coach. I think Coach Hedrick's here today. Coach, Coach, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Again, appreciate you being here today, Coach. <laughs> coach Herb Sindek, Charlie Coles. I mean, there's been a lineage of coaches here that have had incredible success, not only on the court, but developing men that are going to be successful in society once they leave Miami. My whole focus right now, obviously, our, our goal is to compete for MAC championships, to win. And we know that. But at the same time, it's how do you get there, right? Everybody has the same goal, right? All the other schools in the MAC do. So my focus is on a few things. Number one, it's relationships. Here on campus, getting to know the right people, alumni, former players, our current players, most importantly, right? Because again, let's call a spade a spade. Listen, change can be uncomfortable. Uncertainty's uncomfortable, especially over the last week as, as we've been trying to get a head coach in here. And, and fortunately, I'm here today. But again, I want to make sure that the players know that I'm, I'm here for them. You know, I, again, I'm going to spend as much time as I possibly can with them. Second is going to be development. We got to get a heck of a lot better. We got to get in the gym. We got to work. There's no, uh, there's no magic pixie dust for guys to get better. You got you to put the time in. My job is to give them the plan of development, which we'll have crystal clear for our guys, because that's, that's going to be the hallmark of our program. That's what we can do better than any other program in the country that we can control on a day-to-day -day basis is the development of our players. Then the third thing is, is recruiting, right? Recruiting is the bloodline to the program. Um, you know, we're obviously in a very, very uh, talent-rich area. You think of Southwest Ohio, you got Cincinnati, you got Columbus, you got Dayton, you got Indianapolis, you got Chicago's drive within the driving distance, you got Louisville. There's a ton of talent in this area. The Miami brand speaks really, really, really loud. And we got to get guys that are going to represent us both on the court and off the court the right way. You know, with that, again, again, I'm just excited to be here. Um, I guess, Dave, maybe we'll open it up for questions. How you doing today? All right. Um, I, it's not really a question. I just kind of wanted to introduce myself to you. My name is King Goss. I am a player at Miami Hamilton. Um, I was listening to the speakers, and something that really stuck out to me is he talked about the importance of relationships, and you know, he said that you love the game, and that's something that really stuck out to me because I love the game, and I work every day hard. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I just wanted to formally introduce myself to you so I can build a relationship with you. I'm not asking for opportunity. I just want to have an opportunity to have a relationship with you. So nice to meet you, and I'm very happy for you. I appreciate that. I'm not going to get an NCAA yes, violation on my day one, but I appreciate you coming. <laughs> it's a dead period, but I like it. Uh, Coach, I'm Jack Schmelzinger, the sports editor of the Miami Student. I'm just wondering, you've had uh, a lot of success recruiting, especially in this area in the past, a top 10 recruiting class in the nation in 2019. How confident are you that you can do that uh, here at Miami as well? Jack, number one, it's nice to meet you. Uh, but I, I would tell you, I think the brand is, is strong. We have a lot to sell, right? I mean, if we get a young man and their family here on campus, Man, it's hard to beat, in my opinion. Um, you know, obviously, I've been in this area my entire life. I've coached at the junior college level. I've coached at the high school level. I've coached at the AAU level. Um, I got a lot of relationships within this area. You know, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, um, Illinois. You know, again, I've, I've lived my whole life in this area of the country. So I think those relationships will really serve us well moving forward. We just got to get guys here. We got to get out. We got to, I got to show them the vision that I have for this program and how we're going to get this thing back to where it should be. Uh, Travis, hi, Mark Schmetzer from the Hamilton Journal News. Uh, congratulations on the hiring. Welcome. Um, you mentioned that you had brought players here 
back when you were coaching in Indianapolis. Can you mention anybody you actually steered here and played here? Well, I never actually steered anybody. Um, I, I just tried to – I would take kids anywhere they would want to go. Like, I, I, was, I was young. I was probably 20 years old. And I'd, just, I'd get in the car and I'd roll. I'd go all the way. Any, any schools they wanted to visit, I was the guy that they'd always rely on. So, um, again, always had just a great amount of respect, you know, for Miami. Um, that had been back during the Charlie Coles uh, days. And, uh, and he was tremendous. He had a great staff. And he did a great job connecting and working and recruiting. So, just had a high level of respect for him. Hi, Mike Smith, Mac Reporter Online. I know you have been pretty busy and everything, but how familiar are you with uh, Miami in particular, Mac teams in general, their style of play, their personnel, and do you how much do you think that might impact uh, what you do here, the style that you're familiar with, and so forth? Yeah, Mike's nice to meet you. Um, I, I would say uh, I'm pretty familiar with the Mac. You know, my brother's actually a head coach in this league uh, at Akron. So I try to watch, you know, obviously during the season, like when I was at Xavier, you just watch Big East, right? You don't really pay attention to much else other than that. But when I had an opportunity, you know, I'd always try to watch, again, you know, whether it was my brother's team playing. And just so everybody knows, Akron's my second favorite team in the MAC. Uh, let's just get that out, out here, out in the open. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I have a pretty good feel for the MAC because I know a lot of the players, too, that are, that are playing on other teams. Just because they're in the area, again, you always have a pulse on, you know, in recruiting in high school. So I've seen a lot of them. Um, you know, I, again, I know how Miami played. I've watched a lot of film the last 48 hours uh, on Miami, right? So I have a pretty good feel on how they played. We'll probably play a little bit different. Not, not that it's right or wrong, but my style will be a little bit different than what Coach Owens's was on, on offense and defense. And uh, we're going to try to push the ball as much as we can, but we're going to play smart. My biggest thing is I want our guys to be connected to play together, all right? And then on defense, we're going to take a ton of pride on that defensive end. We're going to play really hard. Okay, we got a couple, couple questions in the back. Joe, just go ahead. Or let's, Chris, can you get to him with the yeah. mic? Thank you. Hey, Trav, uh, Dave mentioned in his conversation with you um, that you mentioned you wanted to jump right back into coaching. I can only imagine this month has been roller coaster for you from what happened at X to now what's happening here. Uh, why was it important to you not to take time away to jump back into coaching and continue doing this? Yeah, it, it's, it's in my blood, Joe. Like I, 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 uh, I was sitting there for a few days. Um, we actually went down to Florida to get away for a couple of days and it was like, man, I'm getting bored. <laughs> and I want my life, my wife to love me. I think she'll love me a heck of a lot more if I have a job, right? And I'm not around as much. So I, uh, no, I, I, listen, it's in my blood. I need to be around. I haven't been, last time I have not been around a team. I mean, it's been basically my whole life. It's all I've done. And, uh, you know, I want to be able to invest in, and, and I don't look at like this as a, as it's a job, right? I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate to be here, right? My job, I guess you want to call it a job, is to help lead these young men, right? In order to develop off the court, academically, basketball wise, Again, my, my, my job is to serve those guys. And, uh, man, that's, it doesn't feel like it's a job, right, if you love it. And, again, I'm fortunate that I have a job that I love and I'm passionate about. Anybody else? Next, you got another question here in the middle. Let's see if we can get you Thanks. Uh, Coach, how excited are you to – coach against your brother and what's the trash talk going to sound like between you two man um you know I, I am excited uh he'll be excited as well i can tell you that um both teams will probably play really 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 hard extra hard that night um you know i, I would say if we all would go back to you know for christmas under my mom and dad's uh roof um there'd be a lot of bragging rights for that during christmas right so we, we better get that one we better get that one. But he does a great job. I got a lot of respect, obviously, for John and how he does things. So, um, but, uh, but make no mistake about it, we're, we're trying to beat him. 